Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. I've been cutting a bunch of parts on my Torchmate plasma machine lately, and those parts I've been engraving them and polishing them and grinding them, and I've been running into problems with the uh, scale on the hot rolled steel that I've been buying. So I thought what I'd do is talk a little bit about what that is and the solution that I found, which is, which is by no means um, anything uh, that I've invented. It's quite common, but it's using muriatic or hydrochloric acid. But I've been really impressed with how easy it is. It's a great alternative, in my opinion, to some of the other options to get rid of that scale. Um, and there are some quirks and safety things to it. And I poked around on YouTube and didn't see a lot of great uh, tutorials on it. So I thought I'd throw together a quick video on it. Jumping forward, as you can see here, the part on the left has been removed of its scale with a little hydrochloric bath, and the part on the right is, is the same part, just fresh off the machine. So you can see the difference, but more importantly, um, I'll show you in, in the next video how much more easily the part cleans up or polishes or engraves or machines. Super excited about it. It's been a nice improvement in the shop, um, but again, wanted to walk you guys through some of the risks behind it and, and the do's and do nots that I've learned at least um, in the few months I've been playing with it. So first off, we'll head over to the Torchmate and we'll cut these two parts and we'll talk a little bit about um, the, the plating process and hot rolling and what it is and a little bit about muriatic acid, the safety concerns, etc. And then at the final part, I'll show you how I do the little bath. If you want to jump forward to that part, uh, look in the description below here in the video and you can see the time uh, where all that starts if you don't want to watch me uh, go through the rest of this stuff. The stuff I'm using, I purchased from Home Depot. It's called Safer Muriatic Acid. Uh, it's like eight bucks for this. Um, it's called Safer and it has less fumes. I'll talk about that in a second. And uh, some of the folks in the reviews have mentioned that it's really a diluted concentrate. It's worked great for me, but for folks using this for pool applications or certain concrete cleaning, um, they don't seem to love it. Um, I actually like it if, it's, if this is diluted, um, so it's a little bit safer and perhaps a little better for the environment, um, but it still works for me all the better. I don't need a lot of it, so I don't care if it's overpriced or, or diluted like that. Here is the product on the Home Depot website, and as I mentioned, you can see in some of the reviews that folks have mentioned that it's not the usual strength and it's safer and green, which they don't like. Again, I'm quite happy with it. Um, so it should be available at just about any Home Depot pool store or other hardware stores like that. A little bit about the safety of it. Look, it's acid. I'm not a chemist. I'm not an acid expert or even novice. Um, the, the thing you always remember from high school is <clears throat> never pour water on acid because the small amounts of water that first hit it can instantly boil and splatter and cause big problems. Um, they use this stuff for cleaning concrete and grout. Apparently it's quite good for that. Usual safety stuff, um, safety gear. Um, this stuff really does s smell, even my low fume stuff. So I wear a respirator, I do it outside and I make sure that I'm upwind of it. And you can apparently burn your lungs. So again, this is big boy rules, folks. Be, be really safe about this. I wear gloves and I'll tell you, even if uh, the one time I had an open cut on my hand. I could feel the cut burn just from the fume. So again, this is not um, stuff to mess around with. It will stain your clothing if it gets anywhere. Um, I wear a face shield um, sometimes in addition to goggles because I just just not worth the risk if you drop apart or you fall or, or anything. And then you um, want to have some water on hand or a lot of water potentially. Again, pouring acid into water. Um, not water and acid, and I think that's about it. But this um, this about.com page wasn't half bad uh, in reading about some of the safety stuff. So <clears throat> I had to laugh when I was doing a little bit of research for this video, trying to be at least half intelligent on it. Um, muriatic acid appears to be the same thing as hydrochloric acid, as we see here on Wikipedia, which I assume is never wrong. But um, when I scrolled down, I had to laugh because um, I didn't even realize that this is the exact same way they pickle steel, uh, which is done by you know the major companies like Worthington Steel on on hot rolled plate and big you know multi ton coils. So here I thought this was more of a hobby home way of doing it, but it's it's really um, quite similar to how the big boys do it. And on that note, I know my steel supplier will sell pickled steel, so. I'll get a quote next time I do an order and see it may just be better off to buy it already pickled, depending on what your 
looking for. Uh, the question I need to research though is are there downsides beyond it just being a little bit more expensive? In other words, will it um, oxidize on its own if it's stored over time? So I, I've got to do some research there. But um, when you go over to the Wikipedia page on pickling metal, it's quite a, pretty cool. You can read more about it and how they have to uh, try to recycle the hydrochloric acid and get the iron buildup in it um, out and, and how they um, run it on an industrial scale. I, I think this stuff's cool. Anyways, let's hop into our Torchmate software here. I've got these two brackets I need to cut, and I figured, well, they don't actually need polish, but it's a good example as any. So I've got two of them here. One will be the hydrochloric one, and one will be the control. So let's do a cut path. We'll do a quarter inch ramp in. And I like to move my start points on a surface that I can easily grind um, so it looks nice. So something like these two outsides would be great. So let's get the torch mate fired up and we'll start cutting some steel. Forgot to mention a few things. One, uh, in researching this, another problem that the scale on hot rolled can uh, cause is uh, not having good adherence with paint or other metallic finishes or coatings. So if you're looking to paint steel, uh, it may be worth getting the scale off of there. And then the main reason I got into this is that I was trying to do some engraving. I bought this you know, expensive 2L ink engraving tool. It's a floating tip one. And um, I, to be honest with you, I've been pretty darn frustrated. And I've been trying to uh, get comfortable with it so that I can post a video and say, hey, here's how you really use this thing and make it you know, make your engraving look better, go faster and accommodate fluctuations in surface height of parts, which is the really reason I wanted it. Um, for instance, because a lot of plate steel has a little bit of warpage and, uh, you know, 10 or 20 thou of, of uh, variance in your height over of, uh, 6 or 10 inches isn't uncommon and it makes your engraving look like junk. So I like that floating tool head, but um, one of the problems I was having was you can see on this part here, you get um, significantly different depths to the point where some of them don't even bite in, some of them are too deep, and I, I've spent hours experimenting with this trying to figure it out. And one of the things I know is not helping is you've got a thick scale on this which, which you're fighting um, you know, an unnecessary battle on. So hopefully um, I'll have more successful progress and we'll be in touch with the video once I finally figure out how to use that darn tool. Um, the other thing is this muriatic acid stuff, keep it away from anything that's metal that you don't want to uh, rust. Seriously, the, the fumes from having it open for 20 seconds can cause uh, residual rust in a shop. So I will never have this stuff near my lathes and CNC machines or Tormach. Um, I use it outside in a shed away from everything else. And you know, even the example is the, I have a dedicated pair of pliers that I use. Um, and, uh, and even wiping them off and rinsing them through water and all that, they get a little bit of surface rust. So um, don't know, there may be ways to avoid that. I don't really care. My point is don't open the stuff um, or have it open and work in where you care about other metal equipment. I would be remiss not to mention there are other ways to remove the scale. I just don't like them. Um, a common way is just to use an angle grinder with something like a abrasive disc, grinding disc, or even a sand type flapper disc, um, it, it actually works fine. It's just an issue of the quality of the service finish and more importantly, it takes a lot of time and um, these discs wear out and they're not free. Um, a, a potentially better way than the acid bath is uh, to use a sand blaster, but it's a question of whether you have an abrasive enough media um, or you could even use steel shot. It That, that works uh, particularly well if you've got that set up already um, or you've got, you know, I think some folks can even have it done on a conveyor style sandblasting setup. That's not so common for the home shop. Um, I tried some of this in my sandblaster, just a Harbor Freight Cheapo with some uh, glass media and it didn't, didn't cut it at all. Um, so there are other ways, but um, again, I don't think that they are uh, either as cheap or as efficient, um, especially if you're doing batched parts. Okay, plasma is set up. This is a piece of quarter inch uh, plate, obviously hot rolled. We're cutting with our torch mate at uh, 45 amps, 137 volts, and 48 inches a minute, which is the uh, hypertherm power max manual settings, which works pretty well. 
These aren't perfectly fresh consumables, so they'll be a little more dross or, or um, slant on the edge than normal, but it should, should be pretty good. Let's rock and roll. Let's see if I can fish him out with my magnet here. Yep. Okay, here are our two parts. Uh, most of this dross is what we call low speed dross and it'll actually just fall right off with, if you drop it on a hard surface or you use a putty knife and scrape it off. Uh, I'll do that on one. Actually, you can just see that piece just flaked off right there while I'm holding the part. And then the other one, we're gonna go stick in our uh, acid. Also, I know this may sound dorky, but I love having this equipment. I think it's so cool that in, you know, 15 minutes you can go whip out two little brackets like this, no problem at all. Just to demonstrate, this is a old scrap tool plate from a die set. You can see some of that. You can see the dross on this. What we'll do, it's a little bit of a smaller target than I'm used to, but we'll see if I can hit it here. You can see the pieces just fall right off. There are more elegant ways of doing this. Actually, that's really enough. You can see now most of that edge dross is now gone. Okay, I've got a uh, respirator on, so I'm sure I sound a little different. Um, also got my face mask on and gloves, uh, long sleeves. So all we're gonna do, I've already got my acid in here and we're outside and I'm upwind. So I'll just use the pliers and just gently drop the part in to the bath. Like so. Um, now I haven't done exhaustive testing on how long it takes, but as, uh, I've usually just come back in about two hours and it's good. Um, and there hasn't been excessive wear or removal of the metal, so we're going to come back in two hours and see how we are. Okay, it had been two hours and uh, I took the parts out and I ended up deleting the footage, so sorry folks. Uh, but I cut a new piece, stuck it back in the tank, let it soak for a few hours, uh, but it's nighttime here now so there was no point in filming outside. Uh, but you can see here, here's our original part straight off the plasma machine. Uh, all we've done is knock the dross off of it. And here is our part that we've had soak in the, uh, in the muriatic acid. Um, I actually think it's a pretty cool looking finish in and of itself. Um, so yeah, works great. Um, I'm a big fan of it. You can run a lot of parts in a bin like that. And uh, I find that I, I don't let them touch. I wouldn't let them touch like like this in the bin, but it's fine if they're touching like like this or even if those were straight edges. Um, I've had no problems at all running it that way. So I hope you've enjoyed that, folks. Again, uh, be safe with this stuff. I'm looking forward. I'm um, newer to this stuff, so I bet there'll be some good comments and tips and tricks below from, from viewers and other users. I'm excited to see those. But uh, again, give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Otherwise, um, if you wanna see how I polish this into either a nice scotch bright finish like this, or even something more like a mirror finish, go ahead and click here. I'll show off my new 2x36 bench grinder belt grinder attachment that I'm really excited about and have uh, been really enjoying. Anyways, that's it for today, folks. I'll catch you later. Thanks.